I'm Carl Kreutz. I'm a professor in the School of Earth and Climate Sciences and the Climate Change Institute at the University of Maine. These pictures are from a field expedition during June of 2013 in Denali National Park, Alaska. This was a collaborative project between the University of Maine, Dartmouth College, and the University of New Hampshire. And our goal was to reconstruct the climate and glacier history of central Alaska over the past 1,000 years. This is a picture I took out of the airplane as we were flying into base camp. This is in the Ruth Gorge in the central Alaska range. Those granite walls on the left are several thousand feet high, and the glacier is at least a mile thick. The first thing we had to do in the field season was climb from base camp up the west buttress route on the side of Denali to an elevation of about 14,000 feet. We did this so our bodies would become acclimatized to the elevation. On the left is Seth Campbell, a PhD student, and on the right, is Tim Goder, a master's student, both of them from the University of Maine. This is Mike Vaskiewicz. He's the person responsible for drilling the ice cores on the trip. Here he's doing one of our daily camp chores and melting snow for drinking water and also cooking breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is a spot known as Windy Corner on the West Buttress Route. As the name suggests, the wind is often roaring through here and you can see how the snow has been scoured off the rocks. Ironically, on the day we climbed through here and when I took this picture, it was almost dead calm. This is a picture at 14,000 feet of a famous spot called Edge of the World. That's Dave Silverstone in the picture, and just beyond Dave, there's a cliff that drops probably 2,000 feet straight down. In the background is Mount Hunter, and between the two peaks of Mount Hunter, you can see the ice plateau. That's where we're going to be going and drilling the ice cores that are a big part of this project. Seth Campbell and I were the first ones to fly up to the Mount Hunter Plateau. As soon as we got there, the weather closed in and we had a three-day storm that pinned us down in our tents. I took this picture after the storm ended and you can see how the snow has drifted in our camp. Once the weather cleared, the National Park Service helicopter started bringing our scientific equipment up to the site. Here you can see all the loads of gear. In total, we had about 11,000 pounds of equipment, which took about 30 flights of the helicopter to bring up to the site. This is a picture once we had the whole camp set up. On the right, the little yellow tents are the ones we live in. In the middle, the, yellow, the big yellow tent is our kitchen tent. And on the left, the big orange dome tent is where the ice core drill is. In the foreground, the tower is an automatic weather station and Seth is standing on the tower putting some of the instruments on. That weather station will stay there throughout the year giving us a continuous record of the weather at this site through the winter. For perspective, here's a panoramic picture including the drill site on the Mount Hunter Plateau, Mount Hunter itself in the background, which is about 14,000 feet at the top, Denali at 20,000 feet on the right, and Mount Foraker at 17,000 feet on the left. The ice core drill that we use is powered by electricity, and to generate the electricity in the field, we use renewable energy sources. You can see the solar panels in front of the kitchen tent on the right, and we also had a wind generator. Both of those we used in combination to power the drill. This is a picture looking inside the drill tent. That's Mike on the left and Brad Markle, a graduate student from the University of Washington on the right. You can't see the drill, but it's at the end of the cable that's stretching down into the drill hole. Each time the drill comes up, it recovers a piece of ice that's three inches in diameter and about three feet long. Once the ice core is on the surface, we do some quick measurements on it and then package it up in plastic. The ice cores are then put in these insulated shipping containers, and those are the boxes that the ice travels in as it goes from the drill site all the way back to our university laboratories. This is a picture of the last ice core recovered. This was the piece of ice that was sitting at the bottom of the glacier right on top of the bedrock. So this is at a depth of about 700 feet in the drill hole. We estimate that the age of this ice is about a thousand years. Once the drilling was done and the ice cores were all packed up in their boxes, they were first transported by helicopter and then by the airplane you see here, all the way back to the town of Talkeetna. In Talkeetna, they were put into freezer tractor trailers and shipped back to the universities. In the field, when there's ice crystals in the atmosphere and the sun is shining on those, you get a phenomenon known as sun dogs. You can see a sun dog here, the halo that's around the sun that looks almost like a, rain, a round rainbow. Another common thing that we saw were lenticular clouds. This happens when really strong winds are blowing over the, the tops of the mountain. Here's Mount Foraker in the background with a nice lenticular cloud formed on the top of it. In general, we had really good weather during the field season. Here's a nice picture of the moon 
over one of the peaks of Mount Hunter on a nice clear night. We'll probably be working on the ice cores that we brought back from this site for the next couple of years. And again, the ultimate goal is to use those ice cores to learn something about the climate and glacier evolution in this area over the past 1,000 years.